Hi friends, and welcome to Lisi Bell Lane. My name is Elise, and this is the space I'm creating for us to make, learn, and grow together. I hope that you and your loved ones are having a safe, warm, and filling Thanksgiving holiday together. And I feel it's very important to pause here at the start of the episode and remember those who are who are suffering in Colorado Springs specifically, who have suffered at the hands of a hateful and violent attack this week. Um, there are families who are having to face the holidays without their loved ones or are having to face a difficult path to healing physically and emotionally from the trauma that happened. I would love if you would consider donating to the nonprofit that's managing the donations for different organizations and for the victims of this this terrible terrible thing that has happened. Um, I believe that all humans are created in the image of God. And so regardless of how, how they are choosing to live, I think that the, their value to the God that I know and love is immense. And I'm not willing to debate the value of human life here in this space. So if you feel moved to comment anything negative about those who are suffering this week, I will delete that. Um, not because, well, because it's important to me that this be a safe place. So if you have felt personally devalued, threatened, or harmed by what's happened, I want you to know that I, I see you. My, my heart is breaking with you. And one of the small, small ways that I can, um, respond is to make sure that this space is a safe one for you and you to show up in your fullness of identity. So I am really grateful that you all are here and that you have taken the time to listen to what I know is not what you thought you were <laughs> tuning into today. I promise the rest of the episode will be about knitting and crafts, but this right now is the most important thing that I will say this whole episode because human lives are infinitely more valuable than yarn or knitting. So please be thoughtful and um, consider ways that you might respond and show compassion to those in our community who are hurting. Let's get into it. Okay, so first up are finished objects, and I actually have more than I realized that I had, which is really exciting. Um, before I show you those, let me tell you about what I'm wearing. This is an old finished object. This is the, I think it's the There and Back Again shawl by Anna Victoria, or Anna Victoria. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Let me take it off so I can show you. So this is a full lace shawl that I knit out of my own hand spun. I bought this fiber at Port Fiber in Portland, Maine, and it is 50% yak and 50% silk in the colorway Fresh Carrots, Carrot Tops. I want to say freshly pulled carrots. Um, 
I bought this when we were visiting my husband and I for a birthday trip for me. And so this was a treat of a fiber. I spun it as a single ply and then used the um, added beads as well. So I'll have links for those things in the description box below. I tend to wear it just sort of like a little cardigan capelet wrap it around my shoulders like this, although I can also wear it as a scarf or I can, if I'm feeling fancy, kind of drape it across like that. So that's what I'm wearing today. <clears throat> First up in finished objects are the commission socks that I was showing you last time. I can't pronounce the name, so it'll be below. Um, and these are in the Barocco Vintage DK. Um, so they are all done. There's a teensy bit of curling at the top, but I think once it's stretched around someone's leg, it's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, and these were kind of a relief to knit as they were a women's size medium after quite a few large pairs of socks. So this is the last of the DK commission socks uh, for that order, and then I have a couple of other pairs of fingering weight socks. Done. Next up are a series of stockings. So I have commissions for felted wool Christmas stockings this year, and I have finished two orders worth, which is five stockings. So the first ones are these. Um, I love them. They just, they look, I love to look at them. So these two are going to some friends in Massachusetts very soon. And then the other three are going to a dear, dear family um, in the Texas area next week. So I love them. Um, it's really hard to show you these giant stockings on the screen, <laughs> but these, you saw the one that I was knitting. I haven't done any more knitting on it, so I'm not gonna show it to you again today. Um, but these are, once it's felted and turned into a very solid wool fabric, what that kind of looks like. So they are dense and sturdy and ready to go to their new homes, which is really exciting. Those are all the knitting FOs that I have for today. I have a couple of knitting works in progress. So first up are the next pair of commission socks that I have in my Boston Farm and Fiber Festival bag. I miss miss it. Um, these are the Simple Skip socks. I don't remember the de designer's name, so I'll put it below. And it's just in a gray sock yarn, commercial yarn from a local yarn store. So these are also for that commission order. They're a fingering weight wool nylon sock yarn. And you can see it's got a rib texture with a little crisscrossy pattern, which I think is really lovely. Um, they're coming along pretty well, definitely slower because of being fingering weight. And these are for a men's size large as well. I'm knitting them concurrently on my Chowgu, Chowgu <laughs> nine inch circular needles um, in size zero. So I've made it past the gusset on both pairs and I'm working on the foot on the next pair. Hopefully those will get done this week. It's good progress, I'm feeling good. And then I've put in a little work on my testament for Vanessa Smith designs. Um, you'll remember this sort of movie cardigan. Um, I think that's showing up relatively true to color. So I have, there's short row shaping at the back neck to make it sit higher. If you um, look at your shirts, they're usually taller in the back neck than the front neck because it's higher up back here. So you add a little extra length in the back and then now I'm working on um, the raglan shaping, which are these diagonal lines here that will sit like that. I'm very excited to have this card again when it's done. So I am most of the way through the raglan shaping and then I will separate for the sleeves. And I've made it this far without breaking into my second ball of wool. So I'm gonna need to wind some more yarn. Um, 
so that I can keep working on that. I am a little bit afraid that my gauge has changed too much, that I was knitting more tightly at the start than I am now, but I'm planning to finish the whole like raglan shaping and then maybe block it so that I can measure and make sure that I'm still on track for the fit that I should have. So that's all for knitting works in progress and I'm going to have a brief interlude here to introduce you to the newest member of our family. I'm going to have a brief um, interlude here with non-knitting content. Be right back. So this is Lily. He's a little sleepy right now. I woke him up from a nap. Lily. Oh. <laughs> Look at this sweet boy. Uh, Lily is a stray that we have brought into our home for now. Um, show the people your beautiful eyes, Lou. <gasps> oh, what a cutie. Um, he has generally wreaked havoc in our home, in our lives, on our sleep, um, but has the capacity to be quite affectionate whenever he feels like it and probably will be staying with our family in the long term. But I needed to introduce you to Louie so that I could tell you a story about my spinning work in progress. So I broke into that braid that I showed you last time. I'm gonna show you the fiber here. And you can see he's very curious about it. <laughs> he at one point had managed to grab a hold. That's very loud, Louie. Sorry, he has to scratch his bell. At one point he managed to grab an end of the strip of fiber and take off running across the house with it. So it was dragged out <laughs> through the whole living room, um, hanging from my spinning wheel. And I chased him down and put it away and made it so that I thought that it wouldn't be very accessible for him. And then I usually will leave the fiber connected to the wheel, like coming out of the orifice and then down into the fiber supply. And that was apparently too tempting and he reached up and grabbed the little bit of fiber between the two and pulled it off. And I saw what he was doing and yelled like, Lily, drop it. And he took off running. And the fiber was like stuck to his cheek. It wasn't actually in his mouth. And so I'm chasing him around yelling, drop it, drop it. And he's running away from me thinking, I did, I dropped it. <laughs> but he still had the fiber. So I had to catch him and retrieve that little bit of fiber because I know that would not be good for his tummy. And then now I'm having to break the fiber every time so that there's not any loose ends dangling off of anything because I know he will... Um, he will play with them and eat them. He meows quite a lot, um, which makes it difficult to <laughs> record sometimes and also sleep, but he he's, he's a real sweetheart and I just needed to tell you that story about my spinning. So I have made some progress on the spin. I will include some footage here of what it looks like on the wheel. Um, I am generally using a sort of modified short forward draw with this fiber. I'm spinning from the full, well not the full top, I think I split it into two down the middle. Um, so this is about half of the fiber and I'm just sort of twisting it as needed to continue spinning from that piece of fiber. I am not really aiming for any particular weight or amount of twist. This is really meant to sort of be a palette cleanser, so I'm just letting the yarn be what it wants to be. And I think my plan is to make this into a two-ply. And depending on the weight and the yardage, I keep picturing a sort of like squishy garter stitch cowl, but the yarn does seem well suited to be a little bit more like the lace shawl that I'm wearing today. So we'll see. Um, I had originally tried to plan some yarn management, um, maybe spin like a fractal or something like that. But since Louie has intervened, <laughs> he has made it impossible for me to keep any kind of organization going with the fiber. So I am set free to just spin it how it wants to be spun. I do think that it was not knitting, but was in fact the spinning that caused the muscle spasm in my back. And fortunately, I went and had a deep tissue like therapeutic sports massage, and it didn't all release right away. And it was definitely sore for a few days after that because they are 
not gentle. Um, but fortunately, after a couple of days, most of the tension released and I actually have had a lot less pain than I've had in several months in my back. So I am trying to take it easy with the spinning because I think that is what was like that particular muscle was having an issue with. And I'm also working very hard on commission. So I haven't put a lot of time into it, but I am keeping my wheel mostly set up so that I can pop over and spin for a couple minutes whenever I feel like it, which is really nice. Um, weaving and sewing slash quilting have not had any progress this week because of the focus on commissions. I know I had mentioned that I might work on my English paper piecing project if my back didn't recover, but fortunately my back did recover. So Unfortunately, that project has continued to be a little bit abandoned. Um, the, the other thing that I have been working on is an embroidery project, which um, I may or may not make a fuller episode about the process for this project, um, but mostly because I wasn't super confident about what I was doing. I was just kind of winging it, uh, but I am really happy with how it's coming along. So. Um, the story behind this is that it's a child's dress that accidentally got some bleach on it and um, I suggested that it might be possible to embroider over the bleach spots to make the dress something that can still be either either wearable or be a special keepsake um, of this this child's first birthday so the um, shirt that goes under the dress is this adorable apple print you can see and it's got sort of orange apple red apple and pink apple and then the dress itself is looking like this so i have <laughs> oh it's exciting i have printed off onto dissolvable um, stabilizer, some apple branch motifs, and then I'm stitching over in this sort of color scheme of the shirt that goes underneath. Um, and that's my plan for covering most of the yoke. Um, this is really cute. And I like looking at it in the camera. It gives you kind of a different perspective. So, um, you can see the bleach kind of peeking through, but I will continue to spread more design off of that. And then there's a relatively large spot here in the pocket, here coming down the pocket, and then a little bit down here on the hem. So I have some ideas for what I might do on the other areas, but I wanted to get through the main apple motif first because I think this was probably like the worst of the damage and then this is the next worst. And fortunately, because the apple has this sort of pinky color, it actually makes the bleach color possibly look a little bit more intentional. So I'm hoping that even if a little bit is peeking through, it's not going to feel noticeable or super impactful. But I'm having a really, really fun time with, with this project. Um, and my goal is also to have it done next week. So <laughs> uh, what do we do when we have deadlines? We add more deadlines, right? Right, that's that's the logical thing that, that one should do. Um, I think that is it for the crafting that I've done this week. The knitting and the felting all took a fair amount of time. Um, Personally, I felt really lucky that this week I've kind of had a break from work stuff. A lot of my clients didn't want to meet because of the holiday, and um, I've been able to kind of take some time just to like rest and recoup a little bit, which I think is helping with my fatigue. Um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be done with commissions because I have lots of ideas of other things that I want to be working on. Um, I love doing the commissions and I love doing other things. So that that is very exciting to me. I'm actually recording this on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and because I'm going to be traveling and visiting with my own family a little bit over the next couple of days. Not too long because I cannot trust Bluey not to destroy the whole house while we're gone, um, but at least for a couple of days to just get some some good time with family. So 
again, I hope that you are having a wonderful holiday. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and, and then consider liking this video or commenting below with thoughts you have about my projects in progress. Um, or you can tell me what is your favorite Thanksgiving tradition. Mine is watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade while drinking our family's spiced apple cider recipe. So that drink we start making around Thanksgiving every year and drink it all through the winter. And it is delicious and cozy and always makes me feel like home and like the holidays. Um, so if you've got a special, special food or special memory that you associate with Thanksgiving, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And remember that that link for donation is below as well. So thank you. Have a happy rest of your holiday weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.